three types of microphones and each have a different design philosophy and a different sound. This means that sometimes one type of mic can work better than the other in certain applications. Let's look at the differences. Dynamic mics can be fairly inexpensive and take beating without breaking. If you play live, you are most likely already familiar with an excellent dynamic microphone. Sure, SM58 just been a sound reinforcement workforce for 40 years. A dynamic microphone get its name from the fact that the sound waves cause movement of a thin metallic diaphragm in attached coil of wire that dynamically moved inside a permanent magnet to change acoustic energy into electronic energy. This construction gives a dynamic mic its robustness but because the diaphragm is relatively heavy means they can't respond to sound waves quick which means its high frequency response beyond 10 kHz is usually limited. Dynamic microphones have a number of identifying characteristics that robust and durable, it can be relatively inexpensive, they are not sensitive to changes in humidity, don't need external or internal part to operate, but they usually have a resonant peak in the mid frequency response and a weaken the higher frequency response beyond 10 kHz. Dynamic microphone applications. There are some common applications where you particularly find dynamic microphone such as sound reinforcement, snare drum miking, guitar miking, voiceovers and broadcast. The ribbon microphone. The ribbon microphone operates almost the same as the dynamic microphone but uses its strip extremely thin aluminium foil as a diaphragm instead of a relatively heavy coil of wire. This means that it moves quickly in response to acoustic sound which also means that it has a great high frequency response as a result. Problem is it the foil is so thin that mic has a weaker output signal than a dynamic as a result. Ribbon microphones also have a smoother response than dynamics. If they don't have a mid-range presence peak like a dynamic microphone usually does. Biggest downside to using ribbon microphones is it that they are fragile because of how thin the aluminum diaphragm is. The air blast from a vocal, kick drum or even slamming the protective case will pop the ribbon on some mic so fast that you won't even realize it until it's too late. Though some mics are more immune to this than others, that's why ribbon microphones always have to be used a little caution, it's worth it because they sound great. Ribbon microphones characteristics. Ribbon microphones have a number of identifying characteristics. They have relatively flat frequency response. They have better high frequency response comparing to dynamic microphones. They don't need internal or external part to operate. They are somewhat fragile and require care during handling and operations and they are moderately expensive. Typical ribbon microphone applications include miking cymbals, miking bass, miking piano, electric guitars and acoustic guitars and brass instruments. Condenser microphones. The condenser microphones works on the same principle as both dynamic and ribbon mic takes different approach. All condensers used to electrically charge plates one they can move which acts as a diaphragm one that is fixed because sound wave is wearing an electric charge instead of moving in a diaphragm through a magnet it can respond faster therefore have a better high frequency response and the ability to capture sounds with very quick attack time like drums and cymbals condenser microphones comes with the word known as small diaphragm and large diaphragm version Small diaphragm version have a single pickup pattern and the large diaphragm version have a multiple pickup pattern. Small diaphragm version also have a slightly lower frequency response while the large diaphragm versions have a presence peak in 8 to 12 kHz range which makes them the favorite for vocals. One of the downsides condenser mics is its sensor electronic by nature and require 
either internal or external power to operate the internal power usually comes from a battery sony and akg condenser mics actually use a vacuum tubes inside which requires a very large and expensive power supply as a result most modern condenser mics use what's called phantom power can be supplied from all recording consoles and most external microphones preamps by the way using phantom power with the ribbon mics is a sure way to destroy it double shows that the phantom power switch is always in the off position when you use a lot condenser microphones have number of identifying characteristics they have extended low and high frequency response good ones are somewhat expensive they require either internal or external power but large diaphragm models can be relatively bulky and low cost model can suffer from the poor and inconsistent frequency response humidity and temperature affects the performance typical condenser microphones applications include miking cymbals drum overheads piano acoustic guitar vocals and string sections those are the three types of microphones dynamic ribbon and a condenser dynamic mics are rugged and inexpensive have a limited frequency response ribbon mics have a great frequency response fragile and have a low output condenser mics have a great frequency response react to transients well require power and are affected by humidity and temperature the directional response of a microphone is the way the microphone responds the sounds coming from the different directions around it that is determined by the way the case of the mic is designed in condenser mic number of diaphragms it contains order to be able to effectively work with different types of mics different situations it's important to understand the differences between the typical directional responses the directional response of a microphone is recorded on what's known as a polar diagram sometimes described as the polar pattern this polar diagram shows the signal pickup levels sometimes shown in decibels from all angles and a different frequency ranges to make matters a bit more confusing all mics have different polar patterns on different frequencies a mic can be very directional at one frequency usually one of the higher frequency it can be virtually non directional and omni directional on another the reason why the polar response is important as it determines how the mic can be used make a big difference in multi microphone settings for leakage from different sound sources can be a problem there are four typical patterns commonly found a microphone design omni directional microphone picks up sound equally from all directions that doesn't mean that the frequency response is equal in all directions so it's still best to plan an omni directly at the sound source from the most accurate pickup cardioid microphones picks up best from the front of the microphone but still picks up a bit to the side into the back this provides a more or less heart shaped pattern and hence the name cardioid a hyper cardioid mic is just a more directional version of a cardioid that means it seems less sensitive to the sound coming from the side does pick up a bit from the rear figure 8 or bidirectional microphones pick up almost equally in the front and the back and nearly nothing from each side frequency response is usually slightly better on the front side of the microphone so it sounds a bit brighter from that direction figure 8 mic can be very useful when a high degree of sound rejection is required let's review this four polar patterns omni directional mic picks up sound of 360 degrees around it the frequency response is best from the front cardioid picks up in a heart shaped pattern while a hyper cardioid pattern is even less sensitive to the sounds coming from the sides and finally figure 8 or bidirectional pattern picks up equally from the front and back and almost nothing on the sides mm -hmm.